All right, uh, next listed here, after that, in the very last one in verse 10, is, or a witch. It says, these shall not be found among you. And then, of course, the next one is a witch. And there again, the major symbol that you can see in any toy store, any uh, place where they fix up the signs and, uh, you know, all the paraphernalia is a witch. But, of course... You know, they make the witch look like, you know, a lady with a big nose and a little wart on her nose flying around on a broom, you know. But, of course, then you have the, the fact that some of these parents uh, will allow their children dress up like witches and uh, actually take on the role of a witch. And again, as we tried to say last week, that nobody would even think about, hopefully they wouldn't, ever dressing their child up and let them go off as a, as a street walker, a prostitute, because they thought, oh, that would be bad, but it's okay to dress your child up as a witch. No, there's no difference. You know, God says both of them are wrong. And uh, then next to that, and I'm, uh, found in verse 11, the next one in here, this is Deuteronomy 18.11, or a charmer. Now, a charmer, again is a person that would use a charm or using a certain kind of spell. And this is where the phrase that is used, trick or treat. Let me just read to you. A charmer is one who employs magical ornaments, jewelry, or anything that is worn to ward off evil. It is also involves any action or formula thought to have a magical power. For example, a child comes to the door and says, trick or treat. Now that has a, is a form. It's like a, when they say abracadabra. Okay, that's a form of a charm. Uh, ch charming. The, the little amulets that they wear, the charms. This, the all, you know, the good luck charms. Well, this is what this incorporates. The trick or treat phrase, the actual phrase itself, comes from the fact that they, again, this is documentation. This is nothing that we have just made up. Was, uh, was used because it was believed that these evil spirits would roam as they would be released by Samain. They would roam the countryside, come to a house, and would put a trick on them. They'd turn their milk sour, make something happen to their house. They'd be a poltergeist or whatever. So the only way they could appease these spirits was to put out food out in the front and they would war them, off, warn, uh, war them off. And that's why when you get a knock at the door and you open up the door, there's a little ghost there. Or there's a little a demon there. And the demons, the first word you hear them say is trick or treat. Okay? Th that's what they're saying. You know, you trick, you, it's trick unless you give us a treat to ward us off. That's exactly what this charming All has thing. its root in, right. in satanic, demonic delusion. Right. Okay, we, we're running out of time, so I'm going to get into the next one. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Uh, this is an interesting part of the Halloween thing, is the jack-o'-lanterns. And you say, how is that tie-in with familiar spirits? Look it up in any encyclopedia, the story of the jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lantern was an Irish legend where they claim that Jack died, and because he was so evil, he was barred from heaven, but he, they sent him to hell, and the devil was didn't want Jack in, so he refused to let him come to hell, so he had to roam the country until Judgment Day as a spirit. So Jack begged the devil for a light to walk as he would walk around. So according to this legend, the devil throws him a, f a cold from the fire, and he has his little turnip, and he puts it down in there and carries it around as the what's called the jack-o'-lantern. And, of course, when this came to America, they incorporated the pumpkin. And this is when you carve the pumpkin's face. You carve the little scary face or whatever crazy face. And you put the, the little candle inside. And there again, it was to ward off this familiar spirit. And, you know, they're supposed to light this up with this light of Jack. You know, Jack O's lamp. Going back in Druid practices from the turnip before the pumpkin, didn't they make the jack-o'-lanterns out of flesh of young virgins. Yes, they would And the fat inside was human fat, tallow right. that burned to produce the light. Exactly. And it had to do with sacrificing to demons and all this, right. this evil connotation. Right. And to think that our children are running around with just the shell and remains right. of ugly death. Right. It, it's, it's sad. Exactly. The, the last one here, uh, it says here, a necromancer. Mm -hmm. That has to do with consulting with the dead. Right. And death is the whole image of Halloween. Right. 
the wizard and the necromancer, the wizard, of course, the sorcerers, the druids, the ones who started it, the necromancer, the person who communicates with the dead, the whole concept of death is there, the, the haunted house scene with the people coming out of the dead, the graves, the, all the stuff, these are all based on the, the teachings of what Halloween's all about. If you would like more information, and hardly could we get deep into the things that John has researched out, I'd like to give this booklet to you by John Muncy. It's called Halloween. Is it trick or treat? John, you uh, see Halloween as a tremendous opportunity to witness for the Lord and to turn what the devil meant for evil for good. Right. And you prepare little tracts, real heavenly treats, little Bibles that you give out, and children just love to get those, don't they? Yes, sir. And you give out hundreds of them every Halloween, don't you? Right. They come to your door? Yeah, what, what better time when you think that somebody, a little kid's coming to your door, what better opportunity, instead of throwing a little piece of candy down, give them a Bible, give them a tract, go to a local Bible bookstore, and buy some of these inexpensive tracts, and to them, I've seen more smiles from that than a handful of candy. Those little red Bibles are really unique, though. They just love them. Yes. Why don't you call and get this 339-HOPE, 339-4673. If you need to make Jesus your Lord, or if you need prayer, if you need some counsel, you can call right now. We've got a prayer counselor waiting for you. Or you can write us, New Hope Christian Center, 2240 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. And we'll get this to you right away, all about Halloween. Turn it into a day of witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Till next week when we join you again, I'm Jim Mankey. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you.